I'm Caitlin Monty and we are following breaking news this evening after three Houston police officers were shot in broad daylight now recovering after a suspect shot them in third ward after a brief chase that ended with a crash shots were fired and then that suspect fled again leading to a massive SWAT standoff currently underway in fifth ward. We understand. <laughs> That was the scene. Those were the dozens of shots fired. And right now we are preparing to hear from Houston Police Chief Troy Finner, who is stepping up. The mayor also now speaking, Mayor of Houston. He'll be speaking in a few minutes. Uh, appreciate Chief Pena from the fire department being here. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, for being here. Co Councilmember Council Evan Shabazz and all of these men and women in blue, police officers. Kind of give you a, a brief update, and then, and then I'm going to turn it over to Chief, Chief uh, Finner. Uh, let me just start off by saying uh, we are certainly praying for our police officers uh, who were shot today. Uh, I will tell you, uh, one was shot in the foot, one was shot in the leg, and one was shot in the arm. Uh, all of their injuries are non-life-threatening. Uh, had a chance to visit with each one of them and with, even with some of the family members. All three officers are in good spirits. All were talkative, uh, and we expressed, number one, uh, our support of them, how appreciative we are of their service, and how grateful and thankful uh, that their injuries were not a lot worse, because it could certainly have been a lot worse. So again, uh, all of them are in good spirits, and their injuries are non-life-threatening. Had a chance to talk to all of them. Um, this, has, this has been a a tough week uh, starting on Saturday. It's been a tough week. It's been a tough week for law enforcement. Um, and it's been a tough week for, for the city as a whole, quite frankly, for the city as well as the, as well as the county. Um, what it indicates again is that being a police officer in this case or in law enforcement is an inherently dangerous job. Every single day, uh, when these police officers uh, leave their homes, go on their particular shifts, uh, not knowing what they will encounter in that day, it is uh, being a police officer is an inherently dangerous job. And so I cannot tell you how proud I am of every single law enforcement officer that uh, serves our city, uh, that gives their all in, in the service of our city. And so I want to ask the people in, in this city, uh, to continue to lift them up, to continue to be very supportive of them, uh, to let them know that we are very supportive of them and that we appreciate them uh, doing everything they can to keep the rest of us safe. These are inherently right now dangerous times, and that was demonstrated again today. We are living in inherently dangerous time, and it's going to take all of us working together uh, to create and have a very safe city. There are a lot of guns, a lot of guns on the street. Quite frankly, there are just too many that are on the streets and in the hands of people who will use these guns at a second, on a notice. And again, this is one of those situations. Person gets out, person starts shooting. And now we have three police officers who are in the hospital uh, with, 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 with gunshot uh, um, wounds. So uh, I want to continue to be supportive. Now, let me just say this. Uh, the chief and I, uh, on next week, uh, we'll lay out some additional steps uh, that we intend to take in this city uh, to, to do our part as a city to try to make this city a safe city in which to live. So next week, we'll lay out some additional steps. I won't go into those steps uh, today. Uh, but I'm going to ask people in this city uh, to work with police, to work with Crime Stoppers and others, uh, to participate in helping to make this city a safer city. And if we work together, uh, we will do that. We're going to get through these times. And I know there's a, a lot of people are fearful right now, justifiably so, but, but we will get through these times. But in the meantime, please pray for these three officers uh, that their recovery will be very quick 
they'll be able to get back um, on their feet and then get back uh, to their jobs in the line of duty, doing what they love to do uh, each and every day. Having said that, uh, Chief Fennell, let me turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Congresswoman, Councilwoman, and uh, Chief Pena, uh, Union, and all our other leaders. Thank you all for standing with us. Uh, Mayor's hit on uh, a lot of the points. I just want to say one thing. I want everybody, all our leaders, before I update you on what happened out here on this scene, no more excuses. Everybody, take an active role and get intentional in doing whatever you can do to fight gun violence in our city, period. It's not really a difficult thing. Bad, dangerous people, it's a place for them, and that's in jail. But let me give you the update. So approximately uh, 2.42 p.m., Officers responded to a residence on the 1500 block of Trolley Street. Uh, the suspect at some point spotted the officers. He took off in a vehicle. Officers pursued the suspect to McGowan and Hutchison Street. The suspect crashed. Officers, as they got out of the vehicle, the suspect immediately fired upon the officers, striking three officers. All the officers returned fire. It is unknown at this time if that suspect is hit. Once he got out of that vehicle, he carjacked at gunpoint a white Mercedes Benz. Other officers pursued him to a home in the 1800 block of Lockwood. Officers surrounded that house. The suspect fired multiple times. Thank God he didn't strike any of the officers. Officers returned fire. Again, we don't know if that suspect is injured. He's still in the home. We treat it as a barricaded suspect. Um, we'll give you an update as I receive it. The last update I've received a few minutes ago, he's still in the home. We're trying to negotiate to get him out. Um, we got two crime scenes. The officers who fired they're going to be on administrative leave after they get out of the hospital. But the mayor said it. And we're just grateful to God that they are all right. It's been a tough week for law enforcement in our city. And the two, the two law enforcement officers that we lost continue to pray for them and their family as we plan for their funerals. It is tough. When I received that call today, three officers down, and you don't know the condition. But I'm going to tell you, stand by your law enforcement officers. Stand by the justice system. And we're going to continue to work here in Harris County, Houston, Harris County, to make sure we're doing everything we can do. But we need help from everybody. And remember what I said. And this doesn't go for individuals who need treatment, suffer from drug addiction or mental illness. But these violent individuals, I'm damn tired of it. And we need to stand up as a community and do whatever we got to do. If that is to have more jail capacity, let's get it done. No more excuses. Questions? When, when we I'm sorry. The question, let me just say, I do want to thank uh, the police officers who transported yes. uh, these wounded officers to thank Memorial Hermann. And I want to thank the Houston Fire Department, Chief Pena, uh, for being right there promptly and for transporting officers uh, to Memorial Hermann. And then let me thank the medical team yes. and the staff, the nurses, uh, the doctors uh, here at Memorial Hermann uh, each and every time. They do an exceptional job of going over and above providing ex uh, excellent medical care uh, to our officers, to firefighters, uh, to people uh, who find themselves in, a, in, in need of care. You just couldn't find a better place. So, you know, we took the time, in addition to thanking um, uh, firefighters and police officers, thanking the medical team and the medical, medical staff. I do want to say uh, that, you know, we provided resources to, uh, to the police department. Uh, we'll provide even more. It's going to take all of us at every level to step up and to do our part uh, to make this a safer city. And we, and we will. We will make this a safer city.
city. And we will provide uh, our police officers with all the resources that they need. But I, I do want to say next week uh, that we will be outlining, uh, outlining additional steps uh, that will be taken uh, to reinforce uh, police officers and others who are out here fighting to make our city safe each and every day. But I do want to thank these police officers and firefighters and others uh, for being on the front line and for doing an exceptional job on behalf of the people in our city. Thank you, Chief. I'll give it back to you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Questions? What was the original call? How did they end up coming in Just uh, some type of disturbance call, uh, family disturbance, possibly because it's at a residence, but it's still active, and that's what I have at this time. Go ahead. It's, it, I can tell you this, and, and I, I, don't, I can't confirm it because, you know, but uh, what, it, what it, officers described it as, as an automatic, a fully automatic weapon. And that's something else that we need to address in our community, and we will. Do you think the suspect is still alive? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, um, they're still out, you know, trying to uh, negotiate with him and get him out, so we don't know at this time. No. Go ahead. Yeah, give us one second and we're going to get through with these and then we'll do the, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, hold up, let, let this pass. That, that could be accurate, uh, multiple shots, uh, multiple shots, yes. Yes, um, I think two of our officers were self-transported by one of our patrol officers and the uh, third was from HFD. I, I don't, I hadn't heard any injuries on, on that and uh, we, we hope that's the case, but we'll follow up with you on that because I don't know at this time. One question over there, I can't see through the lights, but. That's part of the investigation and at this point, I, I don't know right now. That scene's still active. Go ahead. I'm pretty sure that it's, that's a residential area out there on Lockwood, and uh, it's 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 uh um, that's what we do. We we try to evacuate everybody around there, keep them safe. I'm not sure. I just can tell you it's a single residence uh, home, a one story, I think. Yeah. I don't have any suspect information right now, nothing confirmed, okay? Was there anybody in the home that I, I, I did get some reports that there were somebody, some uh, um, residents in the home, and they ran out uh, when he came. But we don't believe it's, it's anybody in there right now but the suspect, but we need to confirm that. So Not at this time. Any more questions? Was the Lockwood address like a random place that he went to, or did he go there for a I'm not sure. Yeah, not sure, Randy. Thanks. Hey, who, who knows? But I, I know one thing, Randy. We, 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 need to, we need to address it, and we need to deal with those individuals. And one, one thing that people miss sometimes, it's not most of our citizens. It's a small group of individuals that's, that's committing habit. Our city is a great city with great people in it, and we're going to stand up for them, and we're going to find out a way to deal with those very few, very violent individuals. So thanks for that question. Everybody is, uh, I'll give you the uh, three, three, four, and five three, four, and five year. They're all officers from uh, Northeast. Thanks for asking. All right. let, let me tell you something. And that, that's what people need to understand about the great men and women on our police department. You have some brave officers that put their line on the, life, on the line every day. And I'm proud of them. And, 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 we, and make no mistake about it, we release videos. And citizens are going to see the fight in them when they have to fight. It is happening across, across the country. 
uh, but I would tell you I'm primarily concerned about what's happening in the city of Houston. Over the last uh, week and a half, uh, Chief Fenner and I and others have been talking about additional steps uh, that we intend to take uh, to um, protect the people in this city and to make this city safer. Um, a more comprehensive approach. Um, quite frankly, that was going to be laid out uh, this week, but so much has taken place this week. Uh, so we will unfold those uh, initiatives uh, next week. Um, but uh, the, the crime in this city is, is too high, okay? And it is important that we do everything on our part at the city uh, to combat that. Now, even everything that we will announce next week need to be augmented and, and supplemented by other levels. We have way too many cases in, that are backlog criminal cases, over 100,000. That's unacceptable, okay? So there are many additional things that need to take place. But in terms of what the city can do, mm. what the city can do, uh, we will lay out those additional steps uh, that we intend to take uh, next week. I do want to acknowledge Doug Griffin, uh, head of HPOU, and, uh, and, 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 and thank him uh, and, and the union for uh, their collaboration uh, um, all throughout this. But those initiatives will be announced on next, on next week. All right. That's it. Okay, one more, and we'll, we'll let up. Uh, see if you want to translate for us. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay. Where did it start? Uh, the street that it started? And it was at around 3 o'clock, right? Yeah, 3 o'clock. Uh, Trolley Street. Trolley Street? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Truly. 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 Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Bueno, buenas tardes. Mire, este, estamos aquí para informar a nuestra comunidad que esta tarde, más o menos como a las 3 de la tarde, uh, All right, you were just listening to a press conference with Houston Police Chief Troy Finner and Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner giving an update on the scene that you see there in the large blocks block on your left. That is at Lockwood and Lyons in Fifth Ward, where SWAT and law enforcement presence is heavy. A suspect right now surrounded but barricaded inside of a residence, and people are being asked to avoid this area. Again,